So I was browsing the prices for PC parts, as I often do, and I saw that the Ryzen 5 5650X is finally available again. It's been so long, and I thought, oh, is, is nature healing? Are, are things starting to come back? Are graphics cards available again? And no. No, they're absolutely not. But you know, I think I've waited long enough, so it's time to bring back a series of mine that's been on hiatus for some time. My monthly PC builds. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by the MSI Vigor GK50 Elite LL Gaming Keyboard, featuring a sleek brushed metal top plate and fingerprint resisted matte coated keycaps. Kale Blue switches combine mechanical precision with a lighter key actuation pressure, which is great for gaming, and you can use the array of hotkeys for media control or to customize the per key RGB lighting with an array of effects. The unique octagonal shaped keycaps and stable anti slip gaming base pads complete the package, so click the sponsor link in the description for more on the Vigor GK50 Elite from MSI. There will be timestamps in the description if you guys want to jump straight to the parts list that I go over, but uh, I need to start this video off with uh, several disclaimers. The first, of course, being about graphics cards, which are incredibly overpriced and difficult to find right now, especially if you just want to go out and buy one at MSRP. You just, you just can't do that. There are various ways how you might be able to obtain a graphics card, but for what I usually do, which is recommend parts lists for people to build their own computers, it's difficult for me to say, here, go and buy this and then install it and use it. So for that reason, even though the parts lists I've put together today do require a graphics card, I have not included a GPU in the price and it will be up to you to obtain one. There's different ways that you might be able to do that. You might be able to just get really, really lucky and actually buy one at MSRP. There are YouTube live streams that show stock notifications there is what Newegg is doing called the Newegg Shuffle, which is basically you enter into a raffle and they choose who gets to buy the graphics cards that come into stock. If you already have a gaming PC that you're upgrading or you just have an existing graphics card that's available to you, you could pop that in for now to tide you over until the stock situation gets better. Or you could invest in one of the few graphics cards that are available at MSRP, which are typically the lower end ones that cost around $100 to $150, such as a GTX 1050 Ti. And again, that would just be a holdover until you can get some something better. Your final option, and one that I do not recommend, is just to go to eBay or another similar reseller site and simply pay the price that people are selling the graphics cards for right now. But again, I don't recommend doing that because you're going to be competing with people who are buying them for cryptocurrency mining. And I guess if you're just boiling it down to principles, you don't really want to encourage the resale of graphics cards for insanely marked up prices, even though the demand is there right now. A couple more notes would be, uh, I'm just going over parts list today, so if you want to check out an actual build, check out my build playlist where I have plenty of systems that I've actually assembled for you. Likewise, if you'd like a step-by-step -step tutorial, check out my uh, Beginner's Guide to Building a PC playlist. And yes, even though I haven't done my monthly builds since December, I am still pulling up the December straw poll that I put out for you guys, which was just sort of asking for price ranges. And generally we have the upper $800 to $1,000 range with $1,500 coming in third. And the parts list I have for you today are going to be about that much if you consider the price of a graphics card as well. So without further ado, let's get into the parts list. I've got two of them for you today and they're both supposed to be mid-range. I went with like upper mid-range and lower mid-range. We'll start with the upper mid-range one, which uh, has a total price without the graphics card of around $807 if you were to add on a GPU to that. Or if I was to add a GPU onto that, I would want to add something like an RTX 3080, which should be $700 more. An RTX 3070 would also be a great option for $500 more. A 3060 Ti for $400 or the Radeon 6800 or 6800 XT would all be suitable choices, but of course those are very difficult to find, so bring your own GPU for these lists. With those GPU choices in the $400 to $700 range, your total system costs would be in the $1,200 to $1,500 range, maybe a little bit more once you factor in tax and shipping. But the rest of the parts in this build are a Ryzen 5 5600X, an MSI motherboard 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 memory, a higher end SSD, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and a solid mid-range case and power supply. I went with a 750 watt power supply so that you would have support for something like an RTX 3080. But let's quickly run down these parts. The 5600X was my inspiration here. Uh, I did order one of these back when it first launched. That was back in November. And unless Amazon lowers their price, don't buy it on Amazon. It's not supposed to be $375. It's supposed to be $300. And that's what Newegg is selling it for. Good guy, Newegg. 
Thanks for selling it at the MSRP. And look, ooh, the, the add to cart button works. What a what an amazing breakthrough in online retail technology. For our motherboard, I went with a B550 chipset option that will give you PCIe Gen 4 in your top uh, slot for your graphics card, as well as your main M.2 slot, which is really all you need in a gaming system. This one's about 150 bucks. It's got a nice set of features, including a uh, front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. That's one thing that I always look for. It also has a flash BIOS button. And there are some B550 motherboards that shipped with older BIOSes that don't support the 5000 series out of the box. If that happens to be the case, you can use the button back there and you don't have to have a CPU or memory installed and you can update your BIOS in order to make it compatible with your 5000 series CPU. Other than that, a nice looking board with a decent power delivery if you do plan to do some overclocking or anything like that. And look, oh, it's even got a PS2 port for you, you know, old school mouse or keyboard users. I got a nice flat black matching memory kit here, the Crucial Ballistics DDR4 3600. 3600 is the speed of memory that pairs very nicely with the Ryzen 5000 series processor. This is about uh, $87, well, it's not in stock at Amazon for a while. So once again, uh, jump over to Newegg and you can actually add it to cart. They've got it for the same price. Also note, this is cast latency 16, uh, lower cast latency is better if you can afford it. For storage, we need at least a single storage drive to store our operating system, which is probably gonna be Windows 10 if you're building a gaming PC. Here's the Crucial P2, which is their update to the P1. It's a little bit faster. This is a one terabyte SSD, and it's a little M.2 2281, which means it just slots into a slot on your motherboard. You don't need to worry about wiring SATA cables or power or anything. And with the one terabyte version, which is only costing around $105 right now, you should have plenty of space for your operating system and a decent number of games. Hey look, you can even jump up to two terabytes for 200 bucks, but that would increase the price. I guess while you're at it, you could also do a $60 500 gig version of this. Uh, in the next build, I tried to save some money by going with the Zeta drive, that's $50, but do note that for $10 more, you can get a lot more speed by going with one of these crucial P2 drives. For a case, I wanted one with good airflow and the Corsair 275R airflow tempered glass uh, is a case that has good airflow. Not much more to it than that, uh, just plenty of ventilation at the front and it ships with three fans included. So you don't have to like tack on an extra five or 10 or $20 for more fans. So this is a great case uh, to get you up and running. And maybe you like the uh, aesthetic look or maybe you don't. The only thing that I would say I might want to swap this case for a different one for, since I do have a motherboard that supports it, is one with the USB 3.2 like type C front panel header. Cases can be very subjective though. So just look for something in the 70 to $100 range to get you by and again make sure it's got decent reviews for solid airflow. For a power supply I went with the Cooler Master 750 watts. Uh, this is a nice unit for $84. It is partially modular so the fixed cables are the ones that you're always going to use anyway like your 24 pin. Then you've got some extra cables here for plugging in your PCI Express graphics. It's 80 plus bronze rated and since it's a 750 watt unit it should be able to handle an RTX 3080 with no problem. So if you were to approach me right now and say Paul I'm looking to spend $1200 to $1500 dollars on a nice gaming PC. These are the parts I would probably choose for you. Although again, you'd be on your own when it comes to sourcing a GPU. Let's look at the next build. Our second build here is about 250 bucks cheaper. So I've gone with a last gen Ryzen 5 3600 CPU for $200. Although it is still seven nanometer and still a very good gaming CPU. I went with a B450 instead of a B550 motherboard. So you lose PCIe 4.0 support, but honestly, you don't really need that for a gaming PC. We still have a 16 gig memory kit. It's just slightly slower and slightly cheaper. And again, we have a SATA SSD that's 512 gigs rather than a one terabyte NVMe unit. Also went with a slightly less expensive case and power supply, and it's a 650 watt power supply. 650 watts will get you by with an RTX 3070 or lower, and it could even potentially power an RTX 3080. It's just if you're going for a higher end system and an RTX 3080, they recommend bumping up to 750 watts. So let's run down these parts. Again, the Ryzen 5 3600 is uh, only $200, and again, actually available to add to carts. So that's one of its key features, I feel like right now. Do note that the Ryzen 5 3600 has sold for as little as like 170-ish dollars is what it was going for like a good year or so ago before the 5000 series was even a rumor. You can get five bucks off with this uh, promo code at Newegg right now, but that might not still be available by the time this video goes live. And again, this is still a, a seven nanometer part. Uh, it's still very, very, very good for gaming. And it's, it's just that the 5600X is gonna be a little bit faster, but this is still really good and still 
total six cores and 12 threads. For our motherboard, we have the MSI Gaming Plus Max uh, for $105. For B450, I've recommended the MSI B450 Tomahawk quite a few times, and there is a Tomahawk Max. However, the price on that is cre has crept up towards $130. The Gaming Plus Max isn't quite as pretty, in my opinion. It does have red accents everywhere, so maybe you like that, maybe you don't. But it does have the key things we're looking for, such as support for both our 3000 series and a 5000 series processor. If you double check uh, MSI's website, you can see that they did a BIOS update for this board back in February, and it does support Ryzen 5000 series CPUs now, if you decide to upgrade down the line. A decent range of IO, it does have that USB BIOS flashback feature as well, if you needed it for some reason. So here, once again, just a solid all around motherboard that has all of the basic features that you need without costing too much money. We're still going with the 16 gig memory kit here. Uh, it's just a little bit cheaper. This is a Team T-Force Vulcan Z kit, and it's still cast latency 16, just DDR4 3200, only a couple ticks slower. So probably not even noticeable in terms of relative performance in gaming, unless you're going and run, running benchmarks and measuring, and even then you'd probably only see a one or 2% difference. And you know, this kit doesn't look too bad either with the gray heat spreaders on it. And uh, RGB, despite popular belief, is not needed for more speed in gaming. So you can, you can do without it if you're trying to save a few bucks. Speaking of saving a few bucks, a SATA SSD is the way to go if you're really on a budget and you want to save money anywhere possible. $50 is about what you'd spend for a 512 gig SSD. This will have enough space for your Windows installation and a few games, although you probably will want to add more storage in the form of another hard drive or SSD. Or like I said, spend $10 more and you'll get probably four times or more the read and write speed performance by going with an NVMe SSD like the Crucial P2 over here. Here's our case for $70, the NZXT H510, a case that I've recommended many times, that I've built in many times. It doesn't have the most insanely good airflow overall, but it's perfectly fine. It comes with a couple fans pre-installed. You do have support for a radiator up front if you decide to upgrade your CPU cooling, for example. And for 70 bucks, it's a, it's a tough deal to beat there. Although again, cases are subjective. If you find a different case that you like more, feel free to swap it in. Finally, our power supply is the Seasonic S12 III, another power supply that I've recommended multiple times. Seasonic is an OEM. They actually manufacture and sell this power supply. It's not modular, but all the cables are black, so you're not gonna have any uh, hideous ketchup and mustard cables sticking out of your build. I guess the only thing you'll have is, is the red accents from that motherboard that I chose. 650 watts, like I said, will support anything up to like an RTX 3070, even potentially an RTX 3080, although that would be a little bit of a stretch. So for $65, that's a solid deal. And again, just going back to the full list with the prices here, total price here is $561. So if you were at, to add something like a RTX 3060, which is $330. That would bring the total price for this system up to around 900 bucks. Or of course, a 3060 Ti or anything above that would cost that much more money, however much those costs or however much you're able to buy them for. So there you have it guys, my parts lists for March, 2021, at least for everything but the graphics card. And I really hope that sometime soon, I'm able to do this video series without having to do that disclaimer at the beginning about uh, GPU prices may vary. I also stayed pretty safe with the mid-range builds going with sort of the entry level mid range and the more upper level mid range. But if you guys have any suggestions for me for next month, whether it's uh, any notes on the format that I have going, or of course your requests for parts lists that I might do in the future. I did not do a straw poll for this month because things are still kind of up in the air, but I will be bringing that back and getting your guys feedback on that too. Thank you all so much for watching this video though. If you enjoyed it, uh, you can hit the thumbs up button on your way out. You can check the description down below for links to the parts that I talked about. And there's also a link to my store where you can buy Paul's hardware merchandise with the thumb screw logo emblazoned upon them. It's all very high quality and I have some new merch coming in too, such as some bamboo coasters. You guys should check out if you're interested. Get yourself a beer set with the Imperial pint glasses and a bottle opener too. That's all for this one guys. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back with more videos really soon. We'll see you in the next one.